So far, number nine, it wants us to find at least um, 10 partial sums of the series. And so to find the 10 partial sums, the first thing that I did was um, I made a table of all the terms of the sequence from 1 to 10. So that means um, the first one's going to be 5 divided by minus 5 to the power of 1, and the second was, uh, sorry, 12 divided by minus 5 to the power of 1, the second was 12 divided by minus 5 to the power of 2, 12 divided by minus 5 to the power of 3, and so on, until 12 divided by minus 5 to the power of 10. And so I've put in here these values, and then I put in also the value of the sum, which is a series, right? So the sum of the first one is just minus 2.4. Uh, the second sum is going to be minus 2.4 plus this an, plus 0 0.48. And so that's going to give us minus 1.92. And then plus a 3, that's going to give us minus 2.016. And then um, plus a 4, it's minus 1.996 plus a 5 and so on. And so this SN, it represents this idea of adding up all the every single AN from 1 all the way to 10. So when we get to 10, the sum of all these all these numbers is going to give us uh, minus 2.000. Um, it's all, the decimal are so small that it, this is basically minus 2. And then it asks us, does the series appear, uh, does it appear that the series is convergent or divergent? Um, and it does appear, right, the more terms that we add, the more ANs that we have added, we can see here on the right-hand side that our sum is getting, it goes from minus 2.4 to minus 1.92, minus 2, and it gets closer and closer, even though it's alternating from above and below, it's getting always closer and closer to minus 2, um, to the point that the last two terms, it's so close that we can't even see the, the other numbers, right, that would um, make them not minus 2. They're so, so close. So our guess here is that um, the limit of S of N as the limit of, I should write this, the limit as N approaches infinity of S of N is equal to minus 2. So this is our guess, right? We don't know that. This is our guess. Um, so it wants us to graph both the sequence of terms and the sequence of partial sums on the same screen. So we're going to do that. Um, and so let's see here. I'm going to do it like this. Like this. So that's going to be um, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And this one here is going to be the value of, let's see, the value of... Actually, it's going to be go two by two. So that's going to be the value of one. This is going to be minus one, minus two, and minus three. So we're going to graph it in different colors, right? Um, and actually, I, should have, I shouldn't have put this axis here because that's going to be the color of our sum. So maybe I'm going to do it like this. I'm going to put it in red. So over here is the value of one. This is minus one, uh, minus two, and minus 3. So remember that we're um, graphing our AN in yellow and our SN in blue. Okay, so in yellow, I'm going to maybe make that a little bit thicker. So the first one is going to be minus 2.4, right? So the first one's going to be about, um, about here. The second one's going to be 0 0.48, so about here. The third is going to be minus 0 0.096, so very, very close to zero. The fourth is going to be uh, 0 0.0192, so closer and closer. The fifth, minus 0 0.038. So all of these are going to be, if we can see, they're going to get closer and closer to zero, um, but alternating signs. So five is negative, six is positive, seven is negative, eight is positive, and so on. So they're all going to um, get really, really close like this to zero. Okay. And they're so small that, uh, that just that last one ended up being bad. They're so small that we can, it doesn't really make sense to, we can't really differentiate it in our drawing, right? So that's our SN. So in orange, that's going to be, sorry, that's our AN. And then let's do our SN. So in blue, we're going to do our SN. And so the first one is also going to be at minus 2.4. So also here. Um, the second one is going to be minus 1.92, so let's see, minus 1.92, so it's about here. The third is going to be minus 2, 
uh, 2.0 something. So here, the third is going to be minus 1.996, so it gets closer, and then uh, minus 2.0064, then minus 1.99 something, then minus 2.003. So we can see that it has the same behavior, right? It's getting closer and closer to 2, but then alternating from below and above. Okay. And so from here, we can see, right, that this limit, it does appear to converge to S, is equal, S of n um, is going to go closer and closer to minus 2 as the terms get larger. But now um, we've taken our guess, but now we have to prove this. So we're going to go ahead and prove. Um, and so this is a geometric sum, right? The reason that this is a geometric sum is because we can express it like this from 1 to infinity, that 12, um, it's just multiplying by a constant, so we pull it outside, and then what's left on the inside is 1 over uh, minus 5 to the power of n, and so this is the same thing as going 12 outside, it is the sum from uh, 1, 1 to 1 divided by minus 5, and all of this to the power of n. And so we can see here that this is a geometric series where the ratio, where r is equal to negative 1 over 5. And then if you remember that the sum, uh, the sum of a geometric sequence, right, so Sn of a geometric sequence is given by a1 times um, 1 minus the ratio to the power of n and uh, all over 1 minus r. And actually, maybe I'm going to clean this up a little bit. So it's going to be a 1 times 1 minus rn divided by uh, 1 minus r. Okay. And so this is the formula for our geometric sum, right? So if you wanted to sum the first 10 terms, this is what you would you would do 1 minus um, minus 1 fifth to the power of 10 divided by 1 minus uh, minus 1 fifth. But now we want to find the sum as we want to take this limit here. We're going to take the limit as n approaches infinity of the sum, right? So what's that going to look like? Well, we're going to have uh, the Sn, the limit as n approaches infinity. Our a1, we can see here that it's negative 2.4. So it's going to be equal to negative 2.4, because that's our a1. And then 1 minus, well, what's the limit of r to the power of n? Well, if we take minus 1 fifth, to the power of n, because 1 fifth is um, the absolute value is less than 1, when we keep multiplying by itself, it's going to get smaller and smaller and smaller, right? As we have seen here um, in, in our table here on the left hand side, as we keep multiplying, the value gets smaller and smaller. So this limit here, it goes to 0. So that's going to be 0. And then on the bottom, we're going to have 1 minus, and our ratio is going to be 1 minus minus 1 fifth. Okay, so then this gives us, let's see, on the top it gives us minus 2.4, and then on the bottom it's going to give us uh, 1 minus minus 1 fifth, 6 fifths, and so this gives us minus 2. And so we, we see here with the formula for the sum that the sum is in fact minus 2, which is what we thought that it would be both from the table and from the graph, right? That these points oscillate, but they get closer and closer to minus 2. And so... Um, that is it for number nine.